The Mediterranean is an extremely dangerous place for a U-boat, and after a long stay in the home port of Las Spezia, U-559 is finally ready for her first proper war patrol in the Mediterranean. On November 8, 1941, U-559, a Type 7C U-boat, departed Las Spezia. Her orders are as follows. U-559 is to transit to the highly dangerous waters off of Gibraltar. Once in hostile waters, U-559 will conduct anti-shipping operations. Enemy air cover is expected to be extremely high, along with the presence of British warships. Capital warship HMS Rodney is expected in the area. Under a red sky, U-559 departed the Italian safe haven of Las Spezia. Hello everybody, Wolfpack here, and welcome back to U-Boat. It has been a while since I have last featured U-Boat on the channel, and since my last video, there have been a plethora of new changes to the game. A lot of those are actually really great quality of life changes, which I am excited to show off. Anyway, we are aboard U-559, and we are operating in the Mediterranean Sea. Our orders are to patrol this grid area, off the coast of Gibraltar, which should be quite interesting. And you know me, we are going to get nice and close to Gibraltar and try to stir up as much trouble as possible. It is 1941, so air cover will be probably pretty heavy in this area. It's going to be very interesting. My crew is all hunky-dory as well. Everyone's getting ready. Looks like Wolfgang the Eighth is what we are currently on. He is currently doing some navigation, making sure the boat is on course. We are loaded up with torpedoes, most of which are T1 torpedoes, which in case you don't remember, are the steam powered torpedoes. We also have the PI-1 pistols, which are not the best. So we will mostly be using the impact pistols here. Regardless, yeah, I don't think, okay, we do have a couple of G7E torpedoes, a couple of electric torpedoes, but not too many, so we'll have to be a little picky with those. Deck gun ammunition and all that good stuff is stocked up. If we go to the deck gun, we can see we have lots of high explosive and our flat gun stocked up and lots of food in the galley. However, let's go ahead and transfer some more food over there. Diesel engines are working away. As per usual, I do have quite a few mods enabled during this playthrough, and those will all be listed in the description below. Anyway, I will keep you all updated as to any future developments. Thus far, the journey to our current position has been uneventful. No enemy contacts have been detected. However, I expect that will change rather soon. U-559 has now reached our patrol area. We are tasked with traveling 2,500 kilometers inside the area. We are sending a report to BDU currently regarding the fact that we have reached our patrol area. You know what I'm thinking of doing now is actually doing a quick hydrophone check and this will show off one of the quality of life features that have been added to U-Boat. This little button will perform a routine hydrophone check of the area. So the crew will dive down to 50 meters. You can see the watch crew is going down below deck. We currently have our radio operator on the hydrophone. We are going to assign an additional sailor to the hydrophone just to give it a little bit of a boost here. The boat will quickly dive down to 50 meters. The crew will then scan for any contacts in the area. After, let's see how many minutes it is. They'll stay submerged for a while. After five minutes, cool. They will listen and then come back up to the surface and automatically start recharging our compressed air, which is awesome. The fact that all of this can be done with just a click of a button instead of going through the tab menu and turning on your compressor and all that good stuff. Anyway, U559 is now submerged. Let's reduce our speed down to slow. And let's see what we have out here. Let's go to our map and take a gander. See if anything is out here. Use a little bit of time compression here. Down to 50 meters. Okay, we do have propeller noises off to the north. Let's start tracking. Let's mark its position, see where they are heading. Use a little bit of time compression and start plotting 
kind of where this contact is going. It looks like they are heading east northeast, and we accidentally surfaced. Let's go back down to PD. Five minutes was not long enough for us. Get back on the hydrophone, please, and thank you. And I'll, yeah, an additional sailor will not help out here. We could turn north. Looks like that was around 60 kilometers away. I'm sure we could track that down on the surface, chase down whatever this was. Like I said, we did figure out they were kind of heading east-northeast, something like that. Zero, six, five degrees should be sufficient. Okay, let's hit the surface. There we go. Yeah, they are on that track more or less. Perfect. Okay, surface the boat, increase speed to full. Let's go get them. I'm going to get you on the radio. We're going to send this report off to BDU just to get a little bit of renown here. There we go. Hitting the surface. Love to see it. We do have the Biscay Cross or Metox. This is a radar warning receiver, which should prove to be quite helpful, especially in the Mediterranean, as it is quite dangerous in this area. Let's go ahead and turn on our diesel compressor. All ahead full. We should increase speed to probably around 14 knots. Let's go chase down whatever this contact is. U559 is at a depth of 49 meters. We have made contact with the vessel we have been tracking. I'm actually curious. Sounds like a merchant ship to me. It's awfully loud as well. We are pretty close to the contact. Let's see. Ranges around seven kilometers, give or take this. Uh, current reading here is inaccurate. Maybe 4.7 kilometers in that circle. Let's increase speed a little bit. I am curious if we can overtake. Okay. We do have it. Unknown ship. Let's go to periscope depth. What's our current speed? Currently making eight knots underwater, which is quite impressive. I am curious if we are... Let's see if it's worth using the deck gun against this target. If it's just a lone freighter, I think using the deck gun would be the best use of our ordnance. Let's increase time compression here. There we go. Boat is up at 8 meters. Let's go to our periscope. Let's switch this view here. Go to this sight picture is the one I prefer. Up scope. Scan left. Let's see what we are dealing with here. And okay, it looks it might very well be armed. Lock on target. Bring this up. UK. Yep, it is a British ship, civilian ship. It is a freighter. C3 cargo negative. It's a Liberty ship. Recognize top speed is 11 knots. However, it looks like it should be armed, and it is not. Do not see any guns in those mounts, which is quite nice. If it's an unarmed ship, I see no reason to use our torpedoes. We will certainly use the deck gun here. Let's go ahead and get you, Johan, to begin preheating some torpedoes just in case, though. Just in case we need to use one of them. I could send one fish her way and then follow up with the deck gun. That may be a good idea here. Let's go ahead and establish the target speed. Bring up our stopwatch. We are going to use the 3 minute 15 second method to establish target speed. Begin timing now. We are going to let our stopwatch run for a total of 3 minutes and 15 seconds. Then we'll see how far the ship has traveled and using that reading we will establish the target speed let's go here and take a look bring up our tdc here if we do fire we are going to shoot at a top speed of let's shoot at 40 
Our torpedo will go 40 knots. Angle on valve to target is going to... It's currently... It's currently not great. 30 degrees. I'm going to estimate the target's moving 7 knots. That's just my guess. Currently, everything looks good here. We'll set target range to 1 kilometer. Hopefully, we can get nice and close. I'm just preemptively setting that stuff just in case. Just so... I have to manipulate the dials a little less when we are actually in range. How far are we from the target? Currently, well, six kilometers. We are quite far. We have a ways to go. I'm starting to think the deck gun will be the preferred method here. We've just passed one minute. Passing two, this target, the ship is moving slow though. Passing three minutes. Get ready with our marking tool. Yeah, she may be even going slower than seven knots. Five. 10 and 15 mark it's a little shorter this is let's see seven yeah seven knots perfect i did guess correctly get our stopwatch out of here i'm curious if we'll be able to cut in quickly enough let's assign additional men to our electric motors Increase speed to flank. And we are going to try to close this gap. The target is in range and we are closing in on it it is nice and close and i think we are in a really good position to actually conduct a torpedo attack i was looking at it it doesn't look like there are any large deck gun mounts however it looks like there may be like 20 millimeter anti-aircraft cannons on the bridge there and i do not want to mess with that let's reduce speed to slow since we are getting really close at this point what's our range to target Range is going to be in just under a kilometer. We are going to be very close, which is nice. Definitely helps us with our torpedo solutions. Okay, unfortunately, due to a limitation of the game, let's just go ahead and plug this stuff in. We are not going to use this info. However, this allows us to bring up the torpedo menu here. Let's switch this to the right position. This will use the information from the TDC. We're going to fire two fish, I've decided. Avoid using the deck gun since this freighter is lightly armed. Angle on bow currently, let's set to 60 degrees to starboard. Target speed is seven knots. Torpedo speed will be 40 knots. Range to target is going to be around 700 meters. However, let's check distance to target by setting this to the tippity top of the mass, set. Okay, 1200 meters. There is a gun there. My crew have identified that gun. Keep on closing. Speed is three knots, looking quite nice. No need to really adjust at this point. I think this freighter is ours. Hopefully we don't have any duds here. We are going to use impact pistols. Let's bring up the recognition manual. The draft of the ship is 7.2 meters. So I'm going to set... I'm going to set these two fish to run at 3 meters. Speed 40 knots. 2-2. Two, two. Dispersion, no dispersion. Uh, Maybe 0.5 degree since she's nice and close. Depth of both these fish, 4 meters. Both fish, 40 knot speed. Continue to wait. We're going to wait until the vessel is closer to a 90 degree angle on bow, and then we will fire tubes one and two. Okay, we are clear to fire. Unfortunately, I was a little late. Let's increase this angle on bow to just over 90 degrees, range 700 meters, set. Tubes one and two, ready, loss. One away. 
two away. Two torpedoes away. This should be an easy hit for us. There we go, two very good impacts on target. It looks like she has sustained serious damage here. And I think she may be actually going down here. I did slightly goof on that. I was waiting for us to be at a zero degree gyro angle and I was watching this on the map. However, this tracks with our periscope where our periscope is looking and it makes sense it was not updating on the map. Anyway, okay, fantastic place to save the game. <laughs> <laughs> love that okay anyway the target is going down that is one liberty cargo ship going down to the bottom let's get ready let's surface the boat and uh see what's going on with the crew here increase speed to slow and surface the boat The Liberty cargo ship went down very quickly. We are going to head towards all of that wreckage. Additionally, let's get you on the radio. We're going to shoot off these messages to BDU now. Okay, that was our first sinking of the patrol. Let's increase speed to two thirds here. And let's get some additional crewmen on the bridge. Take a look, multiple lifeboats, some wreckage. That's what I'm curious about investigating here and let's see nine survivors are on this lifeboat what do i want to do we'll give them some supply let's give them some bread transfer that over i'm just such a generous generous person now i am curious do i see any like uh anyone wearing a different uniform upon these lifeboats because you can't actually take sailors on board this isn't a very this is a pretty gamey thing to do i suppose um there were instances where u-boats would take prisoners on board famously the laconia incident the laconia incident was a british passenger liner that was carrying italian prisoners of war and ended up getting sunk and a u-boat took aboard the prisoners that u-boat put the prisoners on its deck and was later attacked by an american b-25 i want to say however this was a pretty big incident and after that the laconia order was issued which forbid U-boats from taking aboard prisoners and stopping for prisoners and all that. We have sailed through and given all of the lifeboats some supply. Nothing is in these little containers that we can take. Although there's three dried fish in here. However, I am not too worried about that. Let's go ahead and get out of here. You can take prisoners on board and exchange, you will get like ransom money for them. Kind of like, uh, kind of reminds me of Mountain Blade, but we are not going to do that with these prisoners. Uh, sometimes you'll see more prisoners of note that you can um, take on board and get a little bit more renowned for them. However, we will continue our patrol. That's our first sinking. We are going to increase speed to standard, try to put some distance between us and this freighter. And once we put some distance between us, I'm going to submerge the boat and do another hydrophone check. However, we do want to get far away from this area because I'm sure there are allied aircraft en route. Another lone freighter has been detected. We are using our hydrophones and doing a quick sweep and we found this guy. He's kind of far away from us. Let's see, 27 kilometers out. However, we are going to pursue. It looks like this ship is heading along the same route, heading east northeast, unless I'm mistaken. Oh, yeah. More or less. Let's go ahead and mark this down here. There we go. Heading 062 degrees. That's good enough for government work. Increase our speed to standard and surface the boat. We are going to chase this one down. Our second catch of the patrol here. Boats coming up. Let's see. Perfect. And this will definitely, well, unless it's a friendly or something, which I highly doubt, 
it'll put us over this objective. We've currently sunk 7,000 tons of shipping. We need to sink 10,000. After that, we need to patrol this area for 2,500 kilometers, which we can easily do. We haven't even gotten close to Gibraltar just yet, which is where I want to end up for this patrol. The boat is coming up nicely. Let's see, how's the weather? Top side, and that's my next question. Weather's good, perfect. Okay, increase speed to full. We are using, we're gonna switch over to diesel engines. I want to turn on the bilge pump. We have a little bit of water inside. Additionally, diesel compressor needs to flip on as well. Perfect. Let's go chase this contact down. We have our target on the horizon. She's just coming up over here. It looks like another British freighter, and those are definitely red flags there. And we are closing in. Let's report this to BDU. Let's get a couple of additional sailors on the bridge here. And let's go back to our Yuzo. We are going to use the deck gun. I do not see any armament on this particular freighter. Block the target. It is a freighter, short stack, mast, mast, king post in the rear. Empire Tower class, 5,000 tons. Draft is 8.47 meters. Although that doesn't matter too much because we are going to utilize the deck gun. Let's assign two additional sailors to this man here, Carl Heinz. and close in on the target. We wanna make this quick because who knows how many British aircraft or warships are lurking about. Although I did not pick them up on hydrophones. The crew has now manned the deck gun. Let's get on the gun. And one thing the developers have added to U-Boat, finally at long last, is deck gun optics. So we finally have some proper optics here. Let's start engaging. One away. We have two men, so the reload speed should be pretty quick. And we are going to start slinging 88 shells towards the freighter. Hopefully starting some fires on deck. That would be ideal. We do want to make this quick. Like I said, however. We have lots of deck gun ammunition. Well over 50 rounds here. Hopefully she will not take that much before going down. Surprised we actually have not started a fire at this point yet. However, we are going to just keep on plucking away, aiming for the superstructure there. There we go. Fire on board. Love to see it. That's going to cause some serious damage. We are start. We're going to start aiming for the bow at this point. One hit there. I will say a lot of the quality of this patch overall has added quite a bit of quality of life features, and I do appreciate them. Um, makes me uh, upset I did not check out the new U-Boat patch sooner, but here we are, finally getting back into the game. That fire is roaring there. Let's make sure the waves are making this kind of bouncy. Let's start moving a little bit. How's this target looking? Not looking great. Keep engaging. Hit right below the funnel there. There we go, another fire has started on board. Same place as before. What are there a bunch of like oily rags up there or something? Anyway, that looks like a pretty brutal fire. Oh, and it's spreading to the stern of the vessel. This freighter has taken quite a few rounds, more than I expected. Another fire has started on board. Looks like one of the cranes just fell off. Just keep engaging it. She's trying to run away. And it looks like more masts are falling off. Let's hit her with two more rounds. We'll see. Actually, hold fire. Hold fire. You, my friends, it's time to hold fire, please. Let's change course. Let's go 25 degrees to port here. That target looks rough.
I feel like I should fire a few more times just to help finish her off. Let's see. Nope, she's going down. No need to do that. There we go. She's sinking. Empire Haven sunk. Send that off to BDU. That's 1,800 renown. I'll stop. I'll stop. And no, uh, we do not want to prioritize electric motors. Okay, sending that off. Perfect. 43 degree turn to starboard. Let's see. Got some survivors. Oh, look at this guy. Take them on board. What do we got? Philip Stone. Looks like he's an engineer or something. Yeah, get, get up here, fella. Ted Moore is the captain of the vessel. Let's take them on board. Cool. Couple more survivors. Let's see. Who do we got? No one. Let's give them some supplies. More bread. There we go. You're welcome. Thanks. Have fun with that bread. All right. We are getting the heck out of here now. And we are going to continue our patrol. We have just started it. We still have quite a while to go here. Well, folks, that is going to be all for this episode. I do hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and comment as it really does help out the channel. Also, if you wanted to chat with like-minded viewers, be sure to check out the Discord. The link is in the description below. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I will see you all on the next one.